Hey, what's going on, everybody? This is Adam Burke from bangthebook.com coming to you with my Thursday three pack video, my three favorite plays of the day for February 14th. Hopefully, we can make some money while you're out there doing that Valentine's Day thing with your significant other. If you don't have one, well, congratulations, you're saving some money tonight. Over at bangthebook.com, we are your one stop shop for sports betting news and information. Lots of great things going on over there at the website. Daily NHL picks from Parker Michaels. Daily college basketball picks from Kyle Hunter. Daily NBA picks from Alan Moody. Of course, with the All-Star break here this weekend, we'll have some All-Star game stuff from Admir Algic. And we'll also talk about it today on Bang the Book Radio with Brad Powers, uh, who will be our first guest on today's program. I've written a preview for the Daytona 500 as well as the NASCAR Racing Experience 300. Uh, we cover golf on a weekly basis. Christian Pino will have a good UFC preview for us this weekend. So we get you fully covered over at bangthebook.com. Please make sure you check it all out and continue to listen to Bang the Book Radio. As I mentioned, Brad Powers, one of today's guests. Tony George also joining me on the show. Uh, and then, of course, on Friday, we'll have another uh, segment with Kyle Hunter, another Handicapping the Hardwood segment. Then also chat with Christian Pina about that UFC event this weekend. So good couple of Bang the Book Radio broadcasts coming your way. You can find the segments right here on our YouTube page, or you can check out the show on Spreaker, Stitcher, Spotify, iTunes, iHeartRadio, uh, SoundCloud, you name it, you can find Bang the Book Radio wherever your favorite podcast app is located. All right, so it was a tough Tuesday night, 0-3 with the, the Tuesday 3-pack. We'll try to do better here with the Thursday 3-pack. Before I get into the official three plays here for Thursday, a couple of things I do want to mention here regarding the NBA. I think it's very hard to go deep into the NBA here with the last games before the All-Star break. You look at yesterday with 11 games on the card, 10-1 and one to the over. The only game that did not go over the total, Milwaukee and Indiana, uh, two teams that you know obviously still have a lot to play for, still looking to lock it down defensively and bank those all-important wins. But 10-1 and one on the over last night, three games in the NBA tonight. If you play the over in all three of them, I would expect you go at least 2-1. and one. Teams don't really want to play defense here in this final game. They want to go put up some numbers and either head to Charlotte for the All-Star game or head to the beach or head home, whatever it is that they're going to do. So I would expect defense to be optional in the three games here again tonight. So if you play the over in all three games, I would think at worst you go 2-1, and one, maybe hit the jackpot and go 3-0. and oh. I could go 1-2, and two, but again, this is one of those angles that a lot of people like to play going into these breaks is that they don't really expect teams to put forth a strong defensive effort. As I said, I don't like to do too much with the NBA leading into the All-Star break, but as you look at tonight's card, the Knicks playing a standalone road game. It's a back-to-back. -back. They're taking on the Atlanta Hawks tonight. Hawks opened a six-and-a-half point favorite, and they're up to seven-and-a-half. The reason why this isn't an official play for the Thursday three-pack is that seven-and-a-half is a pretty lofty number here, but when you look at the Knicks, when you look at what they've had to deal with, when you look at the fact that they're trying to position themselves for the best chance at Zion Williamson, Really don't think we get any kind of effort here from the Knicks tonight. The concerning thing for me is that the Hawks feel like they've hit a bit of a, a rookie wall, so to speak, with Trey Young kind of slowing down a little bit and some of the other young guys on that team trying to get over the hump. So a little bit worried about their ability to go out and blow out the Knicks, but that would be an official lean for tonight. Would be the Hawks minus 7.5. Again, not an official Thursday three-pack play, but just an angle that you may want to consider in the NBA with number 526 the Atlanta Hawks. All right, so let's get into the three official plays here for the Thursday three-pack. We start on the college hardwood in the Summit League, game 677-678, Fort Wayne, formerly known as Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne, taking on the Denver Pioneers. Mastodon's three-point favorite in this one, total 158.5. In Denver's last four games, and they've been one of the worst teams defensively over the course of the season, 1.302, 1.281, 1.194, 1.166 points per possession allowed. Over Fort Wayne's last four games offensively, 1.302, 1.309, 1.18, 1.136 points per possession. If this thing becomes a shootout, which is what a lot of the projections say and what the total suggests, almost hitting 160 here, that's not the type of game that Denver wants to play. And they certainly don't want to do it against a Fort Wayne offense that is 56.3% two-point percentage, that's 10th in the nation. 36.8% three-point percentage, 61st in the nation. They sh Denver shoots threes well. 
So there is that for the Pioneers. But the problem is they don't shoot a lot of them. Denver is 255th in percentage of field goal attempts coming from beyond the arc. They shoot threes well, but they just, for whatever reason, don't shoot a whole lot of them. Fort Wayne does shoot threes well and takes them 45% of the time. Denver 353rd, dead last in the nation in three-point percentage defense. They're 348th in effective field goal percentage defense. This is a terrible Den Denver defensive team. And the one thing that they do pretty well offensively, they don't do it enough. So that's a big problem for them in a game that should be played with a lot of possessions here. I think Fort Wayne minus the three, a very good look tonight. Again, if this becomes an arms race here, Denver can't keep up. Fort Wayne, a very, very good offensive basketball team. They're not great on the defensive end, but Denver, again, they don't do very well from two-point range. They don't take a lot of threes. They don't play to their strengths, don't play to their advantages. Bad coaching job being done there by Rodney Billups in the Mile High City. Give me Fort Wayne tonight, number 677 in the rotation order, minus three at Denver. We move out to the WAC here. We've had some success with some WAC plays, both on Bang the Book Radio and also on these videos here. So game 747-748, the Utah Valley Wolverines take on the New Mexico State Aggies. Aggies an eight-point favorite, total of 140 for this one in Las Cruces. This is a game where the total is increasing a little bit. Again, whack lines on the added board, soft early numbers, lower limits, but still this total going up from 138 to 140. Utah Valley is a very, very good offensive team. They're 13th in the nation in effective field goal percentage offense. 33rd in three-point percentage offense, 31st in two-point percentage offense, and they're nearly 73% from the free throw line, and they do get to the free throw line quite a bit. Now, for Utah Valley, one concern I do have about them tonight, and I'd be remiss if I didn't mention this, their game against Seattle, their most recent scheduled game, was snowed out with that storm that rolled through the Pacific Northwest. That game was canceled. So Utah Valley has not played in quite some time, but maybe that's a benefit to them because this is the third game in seven days here for New Mexico State, and they're off of two very, very big road wins. They beat Cal Bakersfield in overtime last Thursday, then beat Grand Canyon by three on Saturday. Very, very good game. Tough road place to win. So you give New Mexico State a lot of credit for that, but you sort of wonder here, is this a letdown spot? Is this a little bit of a you know tough situational spot? For the Aggies, I think it very well could be. Road revenge here for the Wolverines. They lost by five at home earlier in the year. Uh, they were plus one and a half in that game, so they failed to cover the number. But still, you know, they were right in that game for the most part. Now they get another crack down on the road. And also for Utah Valley in that game against New Mexico State, it was their second worst defensive showing of the year in terms of points per possession allowed. Every time somebody plays New Mexico State, it's like the Super Bowl. Two big body shots for New Mexico State in those wins over Bakersfield and Grand Canyon, but they still kept on ticking. Can they keep it up? Will we see some residual effects there? I think we do. I like Utah Valley tonight, 747 in the rotation order, plus the eight against New Mexico State. And I have seen a couple of eight and a halves as well. Eight, the consensus number, so that's the official line for the pick here. But eight and a half is available out there in the marketplace if you do look for it. Finally, we transition over to the NHL for our last play of the Thursday three-pack. A little bit of a chalky play here in this one, but game 069-070, Washington on the road at San Jose. Sharks minus 165 favorite, total of six and a half here. Look, this is chalky, but you know what? When there's value, there's value. And that's something that a lot of amateur and novice handicappers and betters have a problem with, is that they're not willing to lay big juice. I don't mind it. You know, when you've got a spot where you think there's still value on a team at a big number, I think over the long haul, that's still a plus EV play. So I'm looking at the San Jose Sharks tonight. Yes, they're minus 165. I understand that. If you want to play the alternate line, a minus one, a regulation line, a puck line, minus one and a half, I don't blame you for that. The official play for the Thursday three-pack, though, will be San Jose minus the 165. But if you want to play one of those alternates, I certainly can't blame you for that if you uh, you know, are a little bit allergic to chalk there. But look, you've got a San Jose State team absolutely rolling right now. Became the sixth team to sweep the Western Canada swing of Vancouver, Calgary, Edmonton, and Winnipeg. Uh, obviously, Winnipeg you know, was gone for a while in the NHL, but still a very nice accomplishment there for the San Jose Sharks. 
They're playing well. They're finally getting some goaltending. I think it's four straight games where they've allowed two goals. They're finally getting those guys to play up to the caliber of the rest of the team. They've got two days off prior to this game coming back from that road trip, so I like that. And for Washington, you know, they lose in Columbus 3-0 on Tuesday night. No offense. Didn't play particularly particularly well in that game. Looked very, very sluggish in the back-to-back. Travel cross-country on Wednesday. Now play a third game in four days. Going cross-country so Wednesday doesn't feel like a day off at all. Very tough spot here for the Capitals against the Sharks tonight. San Jose, you know, one of the better teams in the NHL. Whether or not Eric Carlson plays tonight doesn't matter to me. It would certainly help to have him back, I would think, especially from a power play standpoint. But give me San Jose tonight, 0-7-0, minus 165. Again, a little bit chalky, but this spot just really, really strong for them here. Uh, And, you know, for Washington, I would certainly expect some fatigue to factor into the equation. So my three plays here tonight for the Valentine's Day edition of the Thursday three-pack. Fort Wayne, number 677, Utah Valley, number 747, and San Jose, 070 in the NHL. I'm Adam Burke for bangthebook.com.